See there in the red, that is some of the areas that have mostly been affected. Also, uh, we're learning evacuations have been ordered. So taking a look at our X-Red weather system of this bomb cyclone. Yeah, we're also going to get a uh, check-in as well down south. And I do what? This this may be the We've dumbest. done everything but call the Coast Guard at this point. So we're going to try to paddle the Mississippi we're gonna, River. We're going to paddle the old Mississippi River Channel. Paddle it. Manpower. When, when the 175 horsepower motor on the back of your boat doesn't work, seven dudes paddling. That's what we're about to do. Yeah, so we finally got the duck hole pumped up, uh, had a couple good hunts, and next thing you know, the winter storm of all winter storm shows up, and when she got here, it, it got rough. Hold here, hold. They're coming in. He's ready. He's following them all the way to the water. <laughs> Deb stays ready. degrees out here now tomorrow to be zero degrees <laughs> we were hoping to get in on a little pre-front action it's about 50 degrees this morning uh, we've got a bomb cyclone headed our way. It's a term I've never heard before until last night looking at the weather, but it's apparently when the weather drops 24 millibars in 24 hours and you got a, we got a bomb cyclone headed our way, but we're hoping that stiff north wind and a whole bunch of ducks, uh, we'll see. Ha, ha, ha. 
right in the middle of the bomb cyclone. It's here and it's uh, it's everything they said it was going to be. <laughs> so the day before the bomb cyclone hit, we hunted the Mexico hole and we had some ducks come in, shot some ducks, and we were just kind of waiting for the push, you know. Uh, historically, ducks will come right before this front, so we, we, we wanted to make sure we were there waiting for them when they did, but man, they just really didn't fly in front of that front like I would have thought. Uh, but when the, the actual front hit, it got nasty quick. 30, 40 mile an hour winds, snowing, it was a true whiteout blizzard. To go from mid 50s to nearly 100 degrees colder in less than 24 hours, I've never seen that in my lifetime. <laughs> boat ride that morning stung, you know. We all look forward to all, you know, the whole off season looking forward to them cold boat rides, but you get your money's worth when it's that cold outside. So the second day we decided to set up on the old river channel a sandbar that we've, you know, seen ducks use in the past when it got real cold and uh, it was about four foot deep, so it allowed us to put out decoys, not have to worry about them floating off all over the place. And we got down there, obviously a little bit later than we would have hoped, but got set up and it was ducks everywhere. Jump! Them ducks was doing it right that morning. And you know, when they drop down, get right, land in the decoys, and you kind of got a bird's eye view looking down on them, it was a shot that you don't get to make a whole lot for, as a duck hunter. Uh, it, was, it was cool to see them get right like that. It's cold. This is by far, it's stupid. That's what this is.
group there did it right. When the wind chill, the wind's pushing against the current and that wind is creating a mist and that mist freezes and you can see it, it's a different kind of cold. The boat is compromised. We think maybe the fuel line's frozen up or fuel injection system's froze, but I guess we're just gonna hang out here till it thaws, you know, maybe a couple of days and build a fire. I love it out here. I love it. <laughs> Freaking love it out here. <laughs> How do we get off the island? Got them two canoes up there. Yeah. We're gonna need some help getting off. I know that for sure. Are you going? So we had three boats actually on the island, uh, mud motor, two smaller outboard motors, none of them would crank. So we started calling everybody we knew, uh, the farmers that uh, we keep all our stuff at, they're really good friends of ours and have been instrumental to the island. They, they tried to launch a boat, their throttle cables froze, they ended up breaking it. Uh, we had another guy whose boat wouldn't crank to come get us, then we had a guy drive 45 minutes got to the boat ramp and said, there's no way I'm putting in. He said it was three foot rollers. The wind was 30 miles an hour out of the west. And he was like, it's just, there's no way I can come get you. We called everybody we knew and half the people we don't. And, you know, conditions weren't favorable for a river ride. Um, I mean, I get it, but, you know, it comes down to you, you want to get home for Christmas or not. We're gonna paddle the old Mississippi River Channel. Paddle it, manpower. When the 175 horsepower motor on the back of your boat doesn't work, seven dudes paddling. That's what we're about to do. So where we were at, we were kind of on the southeast corner of the island uh, with that hard west wind. Uh, as you got to where you were on the south part of the island, there was rollers in that water that were, you know, two to three foot. So looking at it, you know, where we were at, we needed to pull the boat up river some. That way we knew the current was gonna take us towards those rollers. So uh, we'd have a chance to paddle before, you know, we got to those rollers, but that current was so strong. We didn't, we didn't make it in time and we hit some of those rollers and it was, it was kind of like whitewater rafting except way more dangerous, but we made it. Load up. Here's the Gucci bag. So once we made it across safely, by the grace of God, uh, we had a pretty good walk uh, to where some guys, uh, you know, thankfully met us on the road and picked us up. And, it, you know, it was a weird deal. It was just kind of like, it was kind of like we were there, there to rescue us, you know, and there, everybody was worried about us. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's good to have friends like that. And, you know, it's definitely a day I'll never forget. How about that? Now, if it now, it would be way easier. Let's cut it out.
So the bomb cyclone was hard, hard on the island, specifically the camp. We put Bo and Blake in charge of shutting the camp down and they literally shut it down. They turned off all the space heaters, turned off the power. So the camp was in single digits for a couple days and every fixture in the camp busted. So we, uh, we're gonna be spending a couple days just getting, getting it back right where we got running water. It'd be easier to go through a list of what's not busted at the camp, but everything, commode, faucets, showers, washing machine, pressure tank, the actual pump, you name it, it busted. Well, you know, not to point fingers, but Blake and Bo were the last people there and they turned everything off. So technically, they're both to blame.